Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, get an early start on learning how to fly your PAL-V flying car. Verizon wants to keep you in touch with your UAV, True Blue Power on Robinson R44 helicopters. I'm Bree Cross, it's October 13th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. We have reported before on the PAL-V proposed combination of an automobile and gyrocopter, and it's a unique concept. Now the company has moved ahead to form the first ever flying car school in North America. It's a day-long event designed to introduce prospective customers to flying in a vehicle similar to the PAL-V Liberty flying car. The school is to be located in Roosevelt, Utah. The day-long event will include providing some of PAL-V's clients, VIPs, and media with a familiarization to gyroplane flying and the ability to fly in several different models of gyroplanes. The gyroplanes involved will not be the actual Liberty flying car, but the company says the flight concepts and characteristics are similar. The company says that commencing flight training for their clients is a first step in establishing strategic locations in North America for the sales of the PAL-V flying car. The company anticipates they will deliver the first flying car in 2018. For small UAV operators who wish to connect their aircraft directly to the internet so that they can live stream video and other data from their aircraft, Verizon will soon begin offering data plans specifically for drones. The Wall Street Journal reports the prices for the services are similar to Verizon's consumer data plans for smartphones. Such connections could be a key link and beyond visual line-of-sight operation, according to the report. They are calling their services Airborne LTE Operations, or ALO. The company sees ALO as being particularly useful for transmitting data from drones, inspecting oil and gas pipelines, engaging in agriculture, or surveying wildfires. Verizon also says it hopes to be able to use drones as temporary flying cell phone towers to fill in gaps in its network caused by natural disasters. After the break, Robinson R44 approved for True Blue Power lithium ion battery. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. True Blue Power has just announced that the FAA has granted a supplemental type certificate for the company's TB17 lithium-ion batteries on Robinson R44 helicopters. This is the first STC granted by the FAA for lithium-ion battery use as a primary electrical power source, including engine start. True Blue Power partnered with St. Louis Helicopter to secure the STC. True Blue Power's Rick Slater said in part, quote, With this approval, the FAA recognizes that True Blue Power lithium-ion products are safe, effective, and a viable source of mainship power. This is their stamp of approval, and it is groundbreaking. Jim Robinson, President, St. Louis Helicopter, said the TB-17 weighs less than 16 pounds, which is 40% lighter than the factory-provided battery. He also touted the ability to see the ACU to monitor and report battery status. True Blue Power is the first company in the world to achieve FAA, TSO, and EASA ETSO certification for lithium-ion batteries. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. If you're looking for one of the oldest aviation membership organizations in the United States, you might be surprised when you find out it's the Academy of Model Aeronautics, known to all of us as the AMA. Founded in 1936, the AMA is the official national body for model aviation in the United States. 
They represent more than 140,000 members that participate in modeling hobbies that range from hand launch gliders to model rocketry to radio-controlled aircraft. The AMA is proud of its past and is actively looking towards the future. Things are changing in recreational model aviation with a rapidly growing world of small unmanned aerial vehicles and drones. AMA supports all recreational model aircraft aviation and these are included. And if you think organizations like EAA, AOPA, and MBAA have been fighting like mad to protect their end of general aviation against massive regulatory changes, they're not the only ones. The AMA has been waging a similar battle as it applies to recreational operators of small radio-controlled aircraft. As the world of radio-controlled modeling is rapidly changing, AMA is in the middle of it. Because of all this going on, AMA is also expanding its exhibitions, with the new show to be held on February 24th through the 26th, 2017, at the Meadowlands Exposition Center in New Jersey. The new show, called the AMA Expo East, will be modeled after the successful AMA Expo West, held in Ontario, California, each year by the AMA. We at a and are proud to work hand-in-hand -hand with the AMA. After these messages, he also lifts flight restrictions from Super Puma helicopters. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. EASA has lifted the temporary flight suspension of the Super Puma EC-225LP and AS-332L2 helicopters from Airbus Helicopters, put in place in June of this year. The restrictions were implemented following the crash of an EC-225LP helicopter in Norway on April 29, 2016. Two businessmen from America Samoa have filed complaints with the Department of Transportation after they were weighed during boarding on a recent Hawaiian Airlines flight. The airline says this was a routine route survey, but the DOT is investigating. Boeing and Qatar Airways have announced an order for 30 787-9 Dreamliners and 10 777-300ERs valued at $11.7 billion. With this order, Qatar Airways increases its order backlog of Boeing widebody airplanes from 65 to 105, including 60 777-Xs. The MBAA's annual Careers in Business Aviation Day will be held on November 3rd during their MBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition in Orlando, Florida. Career Day is free for all registered students, faculty, and chaperones, and features informative education sessions. There was an excellent turnout at this year's annual TBM Owners and Pilots Association Convention held in Phoenix, Arizona. The convention's main focus was on airmanship and safety, with an emphasis on low-level loss of control prevention as well as pilot situational awareness. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. It may commonly be assumed that wing walking air show acts are put together when a skilled air show pilot adds a wing walker to provide variety in the air show performance. However, this is not always the case. Carol Pallon's Third Strike Wing Walking Company does it the other way around. They start with the airplane and the wing walker and add the pilot. This has led Pallon to issue a pilot casting call. Pallon says on the Third Strike Wing Walking website that they are looking to complete their roster with two or three more pilots. She explains that pilot selection is normally done in a much more private way, but placing an open advertisement is a better way to communicate with all segments of the airshow industry. Pallon says, quote, There are so many Warbird pilots out there that I know nothing about, soloists that I have never met, and even old acquaintances who might be interested without me having a clue that they are. 
Basically, this is a case of beautiful wing-walking ladies with a bright red 450 horsepower steerman looking for a qualified pilot. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.